Has he struggled with guilt? All I know is that if a Wainwright was going to be killed that day, my dad would have rather it was him than me. Something else died in the UK that day, as a mass shooting previously thought of as a US phenomenon was seared on the nation's consciousness followed within a decade by Dunn Blaine. In the immediate aftermath, as shock gave way to grief and anger, Trevor suffered a further trauma, as he realized he had dealt with Ryan's firearms license for his membership of a local gun club a few months before. In a rural area, this was standard practice for the local policemen, and the law at the time which was changed by the Firearms Amendment Act in 1988 allowed people to own military-level assault rifles for sport. Two days after the massacre, a headline across the front page of the less-than-today greater-than newspaper read PC signs father's own death warrant. If he'd signed my father's death warrant then it signed the death warrants of all those other people, says Trevor, fighting to talk through the lump in his throat. That day I was going to see my mum in hospital and I didn't want to go. All the wounded from Hungerford were in the same ward. There was no way I could go in and face people with that headline. She called me and said don't be so stupid, get your ass in here, we love you. When I arrived, they all put their arms around me and said, Trevor, we love you. The community this gentle giant devoted most of his life to safeguarding is perhaps even more tight-knit today than it was before. Many of those touched by the tragedy have since moved out of town, or passed away. But those who are left, some still living with their injuries, don't dwell on what happened. Destroyed homes have been rebuilt. The school where Ryan turned his guns on himself was repainted and reopened for the start of the school year as usual, that autumn. The simple plaque to remember the victims is tucked away in the memorial gardens, and there is no special service held every year. Instead, on Saturday, the names of the dead will be read out in St. Lawrence's Church while the flag on the town hall flies at half-mast. The people of Hungerford have laid their ghosts to rest in different ways. Trevor's mum, who moved to the town four months after the shootings to be near her son died ten years ago, and her funeral service was packed with the locals who had taken her in after she was widowed, it meant an awful lot to me. I think that's one reason why I never moved away, because there was that bond, says Trevor. There still is, it lives with you forever.